No, I'm pumped about being back in Ecclesiastes. I really wanted to be here last week. I just felt like the Lord, obviously with the video, I was like, you can't preach and show a 41-minute video. You just mean. Um, but Ecclesiastes chapter 7. We're in chapter 7. And I know it's been a while since we've been in chapter 7 of Ecclesiastes. So just to kind of catch you up with what we just recently covered. Uh, in verses 7 through 10. And, and chapter 7 is a nice transition point because it turns into more like Proverbs. It kind of has a flow of thought, but it's, it's, it's smaller, more succinct phrases to get a point across. And so from verses 7 to 10, we discovered how to handle oppression. I don't know if you remember the message, it makes me crazy. And we talked about, man, it makes me crazy. Well, what do I do when it makes me crazy? And he, he taught us how to get over oppression. Well, from here to the end of the chapter, it really all falls under this category, wisdom. Choosing wisdom. Now, under that umbrella, I either have two or three messages. I have this one, and I can't figure out if next week's is two messages or one message. So I don't know if it's going to be two or three messages, but we're going to talk about wisdom. And, and here's really the idea. Solomon basically says wisdom is better than these three things. And so there's three things. So I think I can make three messages, but one of them I'm like, well, that might just be Although if I preached a 25-minute message, is anybody going to throw a hymnal at me if I preached it by itself? And I'm like, eh, you know, Brother Nathan would be encouraged finally. He'd be like, this is what I was expecting when I... Huh? <laughs> not, you're like, not anymore, brother. Um, but uh, I think Brother Nathan voted on me based on the fact I was supposed to preach shorter, and I've let that down. <laughs> oh, no, not everybody. No. There, y'all that showed up after the fact, you know what you're getting into. Uh, so it'll either be three messages, but today we're just covering one of these kind of choosing wisdom sermons. So if you would please stand with me in honor of God's word. And we're going to read verses 11 through 17, if you're able, obviously. Man, I keep clearing my nose here, sorry. Verse number 11. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. Now we can all smile and say, anything's good with an inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. You say, who's those that see the sun? That's anybody that is alive. He writes some things very poetically for no reason, but that's okay. Verse 12, for wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Consider the work of God. Who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? In the day of prosperity, be joyful, but in the day of adversity, consider. God also hath set the one over against the other, to the end that man should find nothing after him. <clears throat> and, all have I, and all things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself uh, over wise, why shouldst thou destroy thyself? Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldst thou die before thy time? Let's pray. <clears throat> Dearly Father, I ask that you'd help us with this message. Uh, Lord, it's hard to break these up because they really do flow together. But for time's sake, I felt like you led me to this. So help me as I try to tie in all of them, still make application that doesn't get redundant over the weeks to follow. Uh, Lord, be with me as I preach it, empty myself, filled with Holy Spirit. Help us as a church to choose wisdom today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. <clears throat> well, I titled the message, kind of lame, I know, but it was a busy week. Choose wisdom, part one. Choose wisdom, part one, because there is a part, at least two, if not part two and three. Uh, we'll see. Uh, choose wisdom. <clears throat> and so obviously I started thinking, what can I talk about with wisdom? And I found the wisdom of, a chil of children. Wisdom of children. Listen to some of these. Patrick, age 10, this is his wife saying, never trust a dog to watch your food. <laughs> solid advice. If you've ever had a dog, you know that is a so that's solid advice from the 10-year-old Patrick. Michael, age 14, says, when your dad is mad and asks you, do I look stupid, don't answer him. <laughs> Like, that's probably good advice, too. <laughs> Do I look stupid? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Joel, age 10, says, Don't pick on your sister when she's holding a cricket bat. Now, obviously, these are not from America, because cricket bat, I'm like, what? Uh, we'll just say baseball bat for that one, but that's solid advice as well. 
Andrew age nine says, puppies still have bad breath even after eating a mint. <laughs> Didn't know that, but a nine-year-old tried. He said, I want my dog to have better breath, fed him a mint, figured out that doesn't work. When your mom is mad at your dad, don't let her brush your hair. That's from Talia, age 11. <laughs> Amir, age 9, says, you can't hide a piece of broccoli in your milk. <laughs> Solid advice, just uh, wisdom. Uh, Mitchell, age 12, says, don't sneeze in front of your mom when you're eating a cracker. <laughs> I get it because you blow a cracker out. I'm like, what? And Michael, age 14, never tell your mom her diet's not working. (laughs) Maybe the best advice on the list. I don't know, next to the, you know, when your dad's mad at you and says, do I look stupid, don't answer him. Those two are probably very solid. Uh, Wisdom. Obviously, uh, wisdom is something Solomon knows a lot about. In fact, Solomon chose wisdom, we know historically, over anything else in the world. And of course, now he's at the end of his life. He wants to encourage uh, people who read this and, and even the Proverbs, as you read the Proverbs, really what it is is him trying to instill wisdom into his sons. That's why I do his sons, sons, plural, anybody that would listen. And uh, I've come up with some, some ideas of wisdom that are just kind of sporadic, but hold on to them for me. Wisdom, they're kind of like definitions, but I don't know if I want to call them definitions because they're from me, so... Wisdom is honesty, but still kind. When you think of when you're talking to somebody else, truth does hurt. Wisdom is telling them the truth, but in a kinder way, maybe. Uh, It's the right use or exercise of knowledge. That's probably a good definition there. Um, This is my redneck, uneducated definition here. Wisdom is this, knowing what to do and actually doing it. Knowing what to do and actually doing it. Uh, Because knowledge is knowledge. Wisdom is the application of knowledge, essentially. And so, knowing what to do and doing it. You say, that's not that big of a deal. Well, I would argue that it's a huge deal. Because I think there, I would say there is hundreds, if not millions, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people in hell today that know or knew how to get saved, but weren't wise enough to take up the chance when they had it. Right? And so... Uh, When it comes to happiness and purpose, which is the idea of the book of Ecclesiastes, wisdom is a key ingredient. Knowing what to do isn't going to make you happy, but knowing what to do and doing it will. So Solomon, in this section, he points out that wisdom is better than money. That's what this section is about. Wisdom is better than money. And many of you in the room, if I said, would you like uh, unlimited money or unlimited wisdom, you're like, I mean... Well, if you're asking me, I'm going to say wisdom because I'm a member here, but uh, let's be honest, unlimited money would sound pretty good. And Solomon's going to make a case for why unlimited wisdom is better than money. So five reasons unlimited wisdom is better than money. Wisdom better than money. You ready for this? This is why it's five. And it's so hard because I wanted to preach the whole thing, which goes all the way through verse 29, but that would have been an hour and a half sermon. I know it. So some of these are, we're going to have to run it all together maybe at the end, but just bear with me. All right. Number one. Verse number 11 and 12, wisdom is better than money because it is a defense, a defense. Look back at the Bible, verse number 11, he says, wisdom is good with an inheritance. He says, man, if you can be wise and you inherit money, you're in good shape. But you know what he's warning is getting money, wisdom is needed because here's what he says. And by there is profit to them that see under, under that see the sun, anybody that's alive for wisdom is a defense. Now, I like that he justif- or he's very clear here, so is money. Because right after he says wisdom's a defense, he lets you know money's a defense. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. And so the, the example he gives of an inheritance, and perhaps you've seen a movie, or maybe you know of somebody. If you know of somebody that, has anybody ever met somebody that inherited like an, an exorbitant, around, exorbitant amount of money? Have you ever, have you ever been around somebody? I, 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 I haven't. I'm like, man, I run in the wrong circles. But I've seen movies. Like, that's a good thing. But you see those movies where the guy inherits all this money, and you're like, oh, man, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be awesome? If, man, if my grandfather died and left me, uh, you know, half a a million dollars, that would be so cool. I know what I would do. And then you, what do you do? You sit there and talk about what you do with it. Man, if I had half a million dollars, because if you know somebody that gets, you're like, man, they're doing, they're stupid. I would. Here's what I would do. This is what, everybody else is always foolish. You're the smartest. You're like, here's what I would do. I wouldn't quit my job. 
I sure you wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't quit my job, but I would. And then they go into the list of things. Uh, but the reality is, you know, money actually doesn't solve all your problems. We actually talked about this just a, a few messages ago in Ecclesiastes, uh, that money actually makes more money, more problems. That was what Solomon said when he was talking about money. More money, more problems. So he says... Wisdom is a defense. That's why it's better than money. Money is a defense too, but wisdom is a, is a defense. You say, I don't understand how wisdom is a defense. Well, here's how. Actually, let me first say how money is a defense. We've seen this work in, in society. If you have enough money, everything works a little different for you. The judicial system works a little different for you. The news seems to work a little different for you. What, how you did whatever you did. We, so we understand how money's a defense. Because if you have enough money, you can kind of get yourself out of a lot of situations. But before money is a defense, he says wisdom is a defense. Because no matter how much money you have, you will eventually run out of it if you don't have wisdom. Here's, here's, here's I thought this was good. Money can get you out of trouble, but wisdom will keep you from getting in trouble in the first place. So money's a defense because it can get you out of trouble. You got enough money, you get into trouble, you can usually throw your money around to get out of trouble. But wisdom is a better defense because it keeps you from getting in trouble in the first place. No, how many times, how many times, gentlemen, did you let something fly out of your mouth to your wife in a, in a fit of anger or whatever it was that you thought, that was stupid and now she hates me? And there's no amount of, hang on, there's no amount of chocolates or roses in the world that's getting me out of this doghouse. You know what? Wisdom would have kept you out of the doghouse and kept you from saying it in the first place. Wisdom, as we know, and, and here's some other examples of that. Proverbs 23, or 22, 3 says this, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. That's, that's, again, that was Solomon letting you know. If you're wise, you see the problem and you don't get into the issue. If you're dumb, you walk right into the problem and you let it smack you in the face. That was Stephen's paraphrase of Psalms 22.3. Proverbs 27.12 says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on, pass on and are punished. Essentially saying the same thing. If you're smart, you see the evil, you stay away from it. If you're dumb, you walk right into it and it smacks you in the face. He said it twice because he needed his sons to get it because if his sons are anything like my sons, they're going to need to hear it more than once. Wisdom is actually applying what you know to be right. Wisdom says, I know there are certain things that I should not do, and I, so I will not put myself in a situation while I, where I will be tempted to do them. One of them I just gave you was just, you know, hey, you know, if you're wise, you'll learn what to say and what not to say. Praise the Lord, this Friday will be 11 years for my wife and I, and you know what? In 11 years, I feel like I've grown in wisdom where I've learned what to say and what not to say. There's some things that you say, well, is it the truth? It don't matter if it's the truth. If it doesn't need to be said right then, right there, that way, then just don't. Say, why? Because I like my wife and I like being married. (laughs) Let me give some, yeah, being alive is probably more accurate. Let me give just some practical ones. If you've got internet in your home, you should probably have it restricted or filtered somehow. Say, why is that? It'll keep you out of trouble. (laughs) Well, I'm a grown man. I don't need, I don't need filtration on my internet. You know what? Money will pay for the divorce attorney. But wisdom will keep you from ever needing it. Does that make sense? Well, I'm a grown man. I don't think my wife should have the right to go through my phone. Wisdom will give you a strong marriage where you don't even think you have a phone and she has a phone. Y'all just have phones that she typically carries one and you typically carry the other and you don't care who looks at what. Money... Money will get you so far, but wisdom will keep you from having that divorce happen. By the way, that is just a tip. Any marriage, in marriage, there is nothing that should be hidden. My phone's an open book to my wife. Her phone's an open book to me. There, actually, there's no password on mine. If there was, she'd know it. There's not, which I know is kind of foolish because if you ever lose your phone, somebody can just jump right in. But I'm like, go ahead, listen to all the sermons I've downloaded. <laughs> I don't know what else you're going to find in there. I don't, you know. You're like, well, what about your online paying stuff? I don't think that far in advance because I'm not wise. Uh, <laughs> wisdom is seeing something dangerous and knowing that it could cause a problem than avoiding it. You know what would be better? It would be wiser to find a new job than to continue to work with somebody that's going to be a problem for your marriage one day. No, some guys are like, 
well, you know, they hired my, they hired my secretary for me. I don't pick them. Uh, if you can't pick your own secretary and the one you got is young and attractive and a problem, and by the way, if she's just young and attractive, that's probably already a bad thing, uh, then find a new job if you can't pick the new secretary. Uh, if, you work, if, if you work with somebody that's a problem for you, it's better to find a job. Say, well, I need money. Yeah, money's great, but wisdom, I, I, I take my marriage over money because money comes and goes. Wisdom is, is important. Wisdom is better than ma- money because it's a defense. It'll keep you from getting yourself into the trouble where you need the money. So first, wisdom is better than money because it's a defense. Next, wisdom is better than money because it gives life. Wisdom gives life. Life. Look at the rest of verse 12, or second part of verse 12. He says, But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Now, he did not say that wisdom creates life, but he said that wisdom gives life. You say, Well, what does he mean by that? Uh, well, if, if wisdom is the proper use of knowledge, and most of what we can learn, and, and truly the best things you can learn is from the Bible, then if you follow something like the Bible, which is full of knowledge, and you apply that to your life, you'll find that it gives a lot of life to your family. And to you personally. Here's some examples. The Bible says you ought not to be intimate with anybody. You, uh, men, you keep your hands off of women. Don't, don't even touch them until you're married. You say, well, why would I do that? It's a lot of fun. You know what's great is once you're married, you get all the fun with none of the guilt. You know what's great is if you've never, if you, if you've never experienced anything intimately with anybody else, once you get the spouse that God gives you for the rest of your life, that's the greatest you'll ever get. I'm not lying to my wife when I say you're the best woman I've ever had. Because that's it. I can say it with honesty, and for all I know it is. And you know what? It makes my life pretty good. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Bible tells us how we're supposed to, uh, to parent kids. By the way, challenging. No, I'm, I'm just being very clear. It is challenging. We've added the fourth one has just... One, great. Two, solid. Three, this is cool. Four, what in the world did we just do to our lives? (laughs) And uh, it's challenging because we're selfish people that, you know what, I don't don't want to discipline. The worst part about using timeout, which if you know our timeout, you know what I'm talking about, is you got to go find that thing. (laughs) Usually it has a hook that it hangs on in our living room, but during Christmas season, there's a snowman that counts the days of Christmas hanging on that hook, which means time out is floating anywhere and everywhere else. I have to get off my chair, find time out, then go down the hall and deal with it when I'm trying to get a back massage on my, back, on my, on my chair. Parenting's not fun, but you know what I've, I've known? If I put forth the adequate effort and follow the knowledge that the Bible gives for parent, parenting, you know, there's more life in my home. There's better relationships. There's more, it just because wisdom gives life. We can even talk about money. The right use of money really allows you to do a lot of great things, doesn't it? You ever met somebody that they make maybe even more money than you and their life is just a mess and their life is a mess and they don't seem to ever have fun and they can't afford vacations and they can't afford to do anything and you're like, you make more money than I do. And you're like, if you would just apply knowledge, wisdom to your money, You'd be in good shape. Most of my siblings make more money than my wife and I. And that's fine. But I'd say my life is the best. I'll argue it up and down all around and I'll fight you over it. My life is the best. I've I've got one wife that I've been married to for almost 11 years. Can I start saying 11? Anybody going to call me out? It's only 10. 10 and 358 days or whatever. (laughs) All right, so I, I've got a wife, been married to 11 years, got four beautiful kids. We have tons of fun together our, because wisdom gives life. Amen. Wisdom gives life. So, first, wisdom is better than money because it's a defense. Second, wisdom is better than money because it gives life. All this would have been just one point if I was going to preach the other message. Thank, you can thank the Lord I didn't. Wisdom is better. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> She says, I testify that God led you to the right pathway. Uh, Wisdom is better than money because it gives us understanding. You know what I've noticed? That all the money in the world can't help you to understand some things. In fact, some people have spent an exorbitant amount of money, exorbitant amount of money, trying to understand things that are just ununderstandable. But here's what I mean. Look at verse number 13. Consider the work of God 
For who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? Now, some people don't like that it says, who can make straight what God hath made crooked? Because you're like, well, God doesn't make things crooked. Uh, he's using a very, a very logical example, a river. What are rivers? Crooked. Why? Because they follow the path of least resistance. That's why, right? So I can, uh, I can imagine, as Solomon is writing this, that he's looking from maybe a balcony of, of his beautiful palace, and maybe there's a river that's just kind of, you know, kind of going over, and he sees it, that river, and, and he sees it, and, and you know what? There's some people that don't like that. I don't like that that river's crooked. And maybe with enough money, I can fix it. Maybe with just enough plucky determination and a shovel, I can fix it. Here's what Solomon's letting him know. Again, read it now. Now that you understand what he's saying. Consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? Here's what he's saying. When you have wisdom, you understand that whatever God created, he can do it however he wants to do it. It's his world to decide. If he wants to, by the way, if God wanted the path of least resistance to be straight, he could have done it. Or the uh, river to run, he could have made all the rivers in the world run straight straight. He could have made them all turn 90 degrees and go back. In. He could have. He chose the way he does it. So you know what? We don't, have to, we don't have to sit here and question why or try to fix it. We just go, well, that's how God wanted it. But let's get real because that's not really a great illustration because who here was like mad that a river's crooked? I do get a little upset when we're trying to go to Silver State and you're like following the river and you're like, I'm getting car sick. <laughs> Nobody cares about that. But you know what? Wisdom gives understanding. Some of us wonder, why did that person have to die? How come I have this illness? How come this happened to my family? Why is this going on like it is? And whatever that it is that you can fill in, you're going, I don't understand this. You know what wisdom, wisdom tells you? Verse number 13, consider the work of God. Well, this is God's world. He gets to do... What? Why, would, why did I have to be born in 1992 where my generation had to live through the 2008 housing crisis and recession, coronavirus, uh, President Biden, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> had to live through some, uh, some illogical presidents. I, talk, I hear some of y'all talk about, or some older folks talk about some presidents we've had. I'm like, he sounds really awesome. And you're like, yeah, he was. And I was like, the first president I really, really remember was... George W. Bush, but as a kid, you don't care anything about politics, so I don't remember anything. The first president I really remember was Obama in 08, because I was in high school. I don't remember some glorious time. You said, well, man, why couldn't I watch some of the uh, old, old, you know, like Leave it to Beaver style shows, and you're like, man, why couldn't I live in that time? The Andy Griffith show, you know what I'm saying? We're like, you're like, look how simple it looked. The 80s seemed like they were pretty awesome. Why? Well, God knew exactly what he was doing. It's God's, he can put me in whatever generation he wants. And he decided to drop me in this generation, which I feel like I do not fit into at all, but that's okay. Because wisdom brings understanding. Wisdom tells us that there are some things that are just the way they are because that is how God wanted him to be. That's how God made it. We don't have to wonder or stress. Wisdom tells us that that is how it is because God made it that way. So, Money. People have spent, in fact, what is the average? I'm, I, I had this. So I wrote this actually like two Mondays ago and then realized that I was doing a video and I didn't need it till this week. So some of the stuff I was looking up while I was writing it, I should have wrote down because I didn't. But I remember looking up the average student loan debt of a person and I'm like, that's a lot of money people are spending to try to understand just themselves. Why are you taking, uh, what do they call It's uh um, gender studies? Well, I'm just trying to even understand myself. Like, well, you're a dude. Because God made you a dude. Like, like, you were born a dude. You want to understand yourself? Go read what dudes do in the Bible. I know, I get real, I get real deep with them, don't I? And they spend all this money and they can't understand why the world is like it is. Why they are who they are. Why things are, and, and so instead of understanding it, you know what our world tries? Just to deny it. There is no difference between a man and a woman. I'm like, I guarantee I'll out bench press my wife any day of the week. She can train for a year and I can stop and I'll still out bench press my wife. And I'll never grow hips that I'll be able to hold my children on as much as I want. It won't happen. I can try. I can eat all the muffins in the world and it's all going to sit right here. 
not here. Why? Because God made it that way. I don't have to question it. I don't have to stress. Wisdom gives understanding where money can't. Next, not only does wisdom give understanding, but wisdom is better than money because it will teach you contentment. Wisdom is better than money because it will teach you contentment. Look at verse number 14. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. So he's basically saying, in a day when unexpected money, in a day when things are going really well, be happy about those. I, I, I've heard of people, it hasn't been in this church because y'all are apparently pretty prideful. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. I've heard of people like, you know, I just, I feel bad that, you know, I'm, we're able to go on this vacation and we live in this home and we have these nice houses and I'm like, you tithe, you give to missions, yeah? Then re- be happy in those times. Be glad that God has blessed you so you can do that. It's okay. It is okay. We talked about it when we talked about money. It's okay to have money. It's okay to have things. There's nothing wrong with those things. As long as they're not an idol, as long as they're not getting between you and God, as long as they have their proper place in your life, God's not against those. In the day of prosperity, when things are going good, when you got a bumper crop, when when you get a raise which you weren't expecting, when your Christmas bonus is bigger than you think it was going to be, be excited. But in the day of adversity, consider... God also hath set the one over against the other to the end that men should find nothing after him. So let me try to rephrase this if I can. Here's what Solomon's saying. Wisdom's better than money because when you're wise, when good things happen, you know to rejoice in those. And when bad times come, you're smart enough to know that it doesn't really matter because this isn't the end of the world. Sometimes losing money is some of the biggest problems we have. I mean, I said living through like the, the housing crash in 2008. Praise the Lord, I was just in high school. But I remember a lot of people, including family, lost a lot of money. It was very devastating. People were devastated. You know what wisdom taught them? Hey, when everything was going good, I could rejoice and be glad. And when things go bad, I can, can, I can remember that, you know what, I can't, take the, I can't take all this stuff to heaven with me anyway. Look at verse 14 again so you see where I'm going. God hath also set the one against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. There's nothing that happens after this wife. In the end, there's, you don't take any of it with you anyway. So let's say, let's say God at one point in your life blesses you abundantly, even financially. Awesome. If he takes it all away, it stinks. But guess what? It wasn't going to go to heaven with you anyway. And anything else, the reality is none of it's going to heaven. If God has blessed you with a bountiful marriage, praise God. And if God decides to take that spouse away from you, it's sad, but they they weren't going to be your spouse in heaven anyway. It was just till death do you part. If If God continues to let you live, that means he's still got a purpose for you on this earth. Enjoy. If God gives you children... Okay, it's not that much. No, No, it's a blessing. It's amazing. If God doesn't decide to give you children, it's. I know it seems sad in the moment, but guess what? You weren't taking them with you anyway. You were going to raise them for 18 years, Lord willing, to serve the Lord. And if you did it right, most likely they're leaving you. That's kind of the goal, actually. It's to raise them. I never want them to leave. I'm like, no, 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 no. We want them to go. (laughs) Come back and see me at Christmas. (laughs) Bring my grandbabies around. I don't really need you anymore anyway once those come around. <laughs> wisdom, wisdom helps you to be content. In the good and the bad, you're fine. But if you live your life for money, you're never content. You ever notice that? Everybody that has money is never content with how much money they have. That's why they're always trying to make more. And they spend it on the stupidest things. I don't know why Elon Musk keeps building rockets. You know why? Because he's got more money than sense. Now, he's just, I'm not saying he's not a smart guy. Obviously, he's smart because he's made billions. But, you know what? He doesn't, he doesn't know what to do with it all. So he's building rockets. Shooting them into space. He's building cyber trucks that look retarded that you can shoot guns at. Why? Why? Because he's never content. He's got all the money in the world, and he, cannot, he can't be happy when it's going good. He can't be happy when it's going bad. He's just not a happy person. He has no contentment because money can't buy that. Wisdom does. Lastly, wisdom is better than money because it allows us to live a balanced life. Now, we're going to have to hurry through this section, but this is verses 15 through 17. 
All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. So he's saying, I've seen a lot of things in my life and even in the dumb parts, the emptiness of my life. We can all agree with this. There's the just man that perisheth in righteousness. Sometimes, there's, we, even, we even have an English saying, the good die young. Sometimes there's people that are great that they should be on this earth longer and they're not. I didn't know Cody Sasser's mom, but I'm pretty sure she was probably a pretty great woman. Missionary's wife, served the Lord with her life. I'm pretty sure she should still be here. Well, obviously not because God, I'm just saying, in our minds, she's a great person. There's no reason she should be gone. And then he goes on to say in verse 15, and there is wicked man, uh, a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. And then there's some people who are going, God, he's 80 what now? Second term, huh? What? I didn't say that out loud. Um, if you didn't catch it, praise the Lord. Why do they get all the life? And somebody that's so good and does good things for people and showing people the love of God and showing people the Bible... How come they're gone? And somebody that lives in wickedness, they're here. Verse 16. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Saying, so what does this mean? Essentially, he's saying this. Don't make yourself the police of other people's righteousness. Because you'll destroy yourself. If any of you have ever tried to force somebody to do, do right, you can learn how annoying it is. As a pastor, I, since I got back from the Philippines, I haven't done it. Usually, I'll text a whole bunch of people on Saturday, encourage them to be in the house of God. You know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to be over righteousness. Because the, the church is where they should be on Sunday. I shouldn't have to text them. They should be here. And then, you know what it does when they don't show up Sunday morning? I'm just killing myself. Because my enthusiasm, my excitement, when, when, when church starts and people that should be here aren't my excitement goes oh shame on me by the way for letting my emotions roller coaster like that i try to just be excited all the time but sometimes people can frustrate you verse number 17 be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish why shouldest thou die before thy time here's also what he's saying don't say because i can't be perfect and i can't force anybody else to be perfect and do right to say well forget it then i'm just going to live wickedly because the end of verse 17 is letting you know you're going to die before you're supposed to. Hey, if you want to live a wicked life and go get hammered and then try to drive home and die because you decided you couldn't live perfect, that was kind of dumb. So you hear all of those, if we could put them all together, I'm gonna, I, I, I typed it out, so let me read it. Some good people die young and some wicked live long lives. Don't try to control others and don't beat yourself up because you're not perfect. Don't personally fall into wickedness and don't be foolish because you may shorten your own life. Simply put, wisdom is a balance. Is there times when you ought to tell somebody or encourage somebody that is in sin? That's biblical sometimes. As a pastor, there's times when I see things that I got to say things. See something, say something. That's the biblical motto. Just kidding, that's not the biblical motto. But <laughs> No, as a pastor, there's times if I see something in your life, I should say something. Well, what, if you, what if they're not going to fix it? Well, at least I did my part. But there is times where I've got to learn it's not my job to try to fix it all. Or else I'd have to follow all of you around 24-7 and tell you everything that you're doing wrong and that's awkward for both of us. <laughs> or all of us, who knows, however many are involved. It's a balance. Sometimes you need to accept that you can't be perfect. But that doesn't mean you just give over to all your fleshly loves, lusts and desires. Well, I can't be perfect, so I'm just going to live in the flesh. Well, no, find a balance. Understand you're not going to be perfect, but try to stay away from foolishness because you might just die too young. Wisdom gives you the balance of knowing when to correct others and how to handle your own life. Wisdom does that. There's not enough money in the world to pay for that. In fact, there's some pretty smart or pretty dumb rich people in this world. All right, we're about done. Here's the conclusion. Simple conclusion. Went a little longer than I should have. Just be glad that was just part one of three. Looks like it's for sure next week's just part two. Because uh, <laughs> All right. If wisdom is better than money, which the Bible states it is. Can we all agree wisdom is better than money? The Bible says it. It's fact. Whether we even agree completely or not, we can agree. Then simple question. How much time do you spend gaining wisdom opposed to how much time do you spend trying to gain money? I know it's a simple question. 
But I live this life, and I listen to people talk about saving money and using it for these things and making money. But you know what I never hear anybody talking about? Gaining wisdom. And yet, the Bible says that's far, of far more value. If wisdom is knowing what to do and actually doing it, how much time do you spend learning what to do, and what are you setting up to make sure you actually do it? How much time are you spending learning what I need to do, and what are you setting up in your life to make sure you actually do it? The Bible is a good place to get knowledge. I already said that, but it's fact. This is the only thing I can trust in this life. Amen. Truly, this is it. No, boil down my life. What can you truly, honestly trust without any doubt? This. What about your wife? This. <laughs> what about your kids? Yeah, it's this. What about yourself? This. So this is a good place to get knowledge. So how often are you getting into it? Well, pastor, you know, we're not all like you. We don't just, we don't just work out of our Bible. You know, some of us got real jobs and things to do. Okay, I get it. But if you have time for TV or social media or hobbies, then you probably have time to gain some knowledge from the Bible that you can apply and make it wisdom. Wisdom's applying it. So if, you're getting, if you are getting the Bible, what are you setting up to make sure that you implement the things that you read? Because knowledge, it, knowledge puffeth up. That's all the Bible really says about knowledge. Knowledge puff it up. So what are you doing to make sure you apply it and turn it into wisdom? So let's use the Bible. Uh, okay, I, re I read the Bible every day. Okay, now what are you doing to make sure you take what you read and learn how to apply it to your life? Here's a real, here's a real tangible example. I have a journal. Why do you have a journal, Pastor? So you know what to read? No, my ribbons pretty much tell me where I'm at every day. Then why do you have a Bible? Because at the very, or journal, at the very end of the journal it says, how does this apply to my life? You know what that forces me to think out? Not just what this abstract story is saying, but what this means for me today. It's taking knowledge and making it, applying it to my life to force it to be wisdom. Knowledge comes from the experience of others, or knowledge can also come from the experience of others. How often do you seek knowledge from someone who has done well in the area you are seeking to excel in? Marriage. How often do you... I, I love actually talking to old people who are married for like a long time because I've never, listen, fact, so far, I've never got really good advice from an old married couple. It's like they've done it for so long, they're like, I don't know, we just did it. You know, how do you have a 60 years of marriage, you know, what's the secret? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Happy wife, happy life. But you know that's biblically not accurate. I never get good advice, but there are marriages that I see excel, and you're like, man, what is it? And, and usually, truthfully, it still boils down to the Bible, if I'm going to be very clear. What they describe, you'll, my, my wife's parent, or grandparents are not saved, but is, they've been married for 60 years, almost. Almost 60 years now. It's getting close, because he's turning 80, right? Yeah, they already had their 60th. Yeah, because, no, it's like 61 or 2 now. Anyways, they've been married over 60 years, but they're not saved. But you know, what, you know what makes their marriage work? All the biblical principles. It's just, it's the bio, like, that's all it is. So, uh, obviously I'm saying, you know, find somebody that excels in that area. Most of the time that's going to boil back down to the Bible. You know, child rearing. If you see somebody that's got really well-behaved kids, not me, but somebody that has real, really well-behaved kids, maybe ask them, how, man, what is, what's your trick? And by the way, most of the time, the tricks go back to the Bible. <laughs> like, well, I just, you know, I don't spare the rod. I love them, so I'm not going to stop. <laughs> if you see somebody that's serving the Lord, and you say, man, how do you, how do you, how'd you get to this point? How did you do that? I personally love picking the brains of men who are in ministry that I respect. In fact, that's probably why they don't answer my phone calls anymore. <laughs> I love talking to preachers that are 10, 20 years my senior that have seemingly very God-blessed, blessed of God ministries. And I like go, what, what's your trick? What's, you know, what is it? By the way, it goes back to the Bible in a lot of ways, but I love it. Then wisdom is applying it. Put into practice whatever they say. If it's biblical. 
Money seems to be the central focus of many of our lives. And I understand that money is what makes the world go round. And I understand we have to think about it. I understand that. But God here said wisdom is better than money. So, so how much effort are you putting in to gaining wisdom? One day, even if you have all the money in the world, it won't help you if you don't have wisdom. Even if you do gain all the money in the world, it still won't help you in the day you have if, as much as if you just had wisdom. So I'd encourage you, choose wisdom, part one. Let's pray. And we'll have an invitation, brief invitation.